your most limited resource on the SAT and in the math section in particular is time. So you'll be battling with time largely throughout the entire test, both in the sense that time is really short. You only have 20 or 25 minutes per section. So that's a challenge. But then also in the sense that time is really long. You've got three hours and 45 minutes plus to do this test. And it's just, it takes a lot of effort and energy to sit there for that long actually working on the test. So time is gonna be the, the resource you're gonna be battling. So it's all about, pacing is basically how do you maintain, how do you manage the time that you're given to maximize your score? How many questions should you do or attempt to do in the time you're given to maximize your chances of reaching your score goals. So it depends obviously on what your score goals are. If you're going for less than a 600 in the math section, you basically want to avoid almost all the hearts. Which means you're going to focus on the easies and the mediums. If you get most if not all of the easies and mediums right, you can still get a 600, maybe even a 600 plus, depending on the test. So spending a lot of time at this level working on hards or worrying about hards is really not a good use of your time and effort because you want to spend more time not doing hard questions but making sure you do your best on those easies and mediums. So avoid almost all the hards, omit almost all the hards, just focus on the easies and mediums, maybe sprinkle in an occasional hard if it's a question that you think you can do. If you're going for a 600 or more, which is really you know between a 600 and a 700, now you're going to start to slowly add in the hards. Uh, and this is, of course, assuming that you've mastered the eases and mediums. So if you're still having issues with eases and mediums, you want to make sure you get those down first, because those points are worth equally as uh, many points as the hard questions. So make sure you've mastered those first and then slowly add in hard, so hard questions that you know shortcuts for, hard questions that actually turn out to be easy if you know the right strategy, and hard questions that you know maybe you, you like geometry, so maybe you would try some geometry hard questions, right? So be selective in the hard questions you do just to start bumping up your score above that 600 because if you do one above a 600, you're going to have to try some of the hards. Not all of them, but some of them. Finally, for above a 700, and we looked at this a little bit before, you want to omit almost none. And remember, it's because the curve greater than 700 is pretty steep. As soon as you start omitting questions, the score potential just drops off a cliff. If you omit three, you know your ceiling is like a 740 or something. So you really have to be very careful with the omits. You really only can omit, if you're going for an 800, you can't omit any. If you're going for just a 700 plus, maybe one or two. But then you better be pretty accurate with the questions you do do. Now, how about omitting versus guessing? So now that you know how many questions to do, what's a good general omitting guidelines? Well, again, I'm kind of repeating a little bit what's been said already, but for less than a 600, you pretty much want to omit most, if not all, of the hards. If you're going for greater than a 600, you want to omit some of the hards. And if you're going for above a 700, almost no hards. So what does this mean in terms of guessing? Well, it's a little bit harder to guess on the SAT math section because it's not as easy, say, as it is on the math, or excuse me, on the reading or the writing to eliminate choices and therefore narrow down. But guessing does occur, is possible in certain questions where you can make eliminations. And in general, if you can eliminate two or three choices so that you're down to two or three choices as your guess, uh, then you want to guess in this situation. So if you're down to two or three, you want to make a guess. And it just works out that the math uh, is it favors that kind of move. So that's the general pacing and guessing strategy. Uh, obviously, like I said, it depends on your specific score goal. And even within these ranges, there's some variation depending on your own personal strengths and weaknesses. So, But this is a good guideline to at least get you started.